the title of the talk is Assembly and Annotation of the Genome of an Antibiotic Generating Exploit Bacteria. Hello everyone, my name is Savannah Orton, and today I will be discussing the genome of an antibiotic generating soil bacterium. My mentors are Dr. Prim and Dr. Bacelli, and this is my research project for the NSF REU Summer Research Program. The diminishing supply of effective antibiotics is a current worldwide threat. In order to minimize this issue, Sam Houston State University microbiology students participated in a program called the Small World Initiative in search of soil dwelling bacteria to produce more forms of antibiotics. The students began this program by collecting a soil sample from the Piney Woods region of Texas and isolating the bacteria within that sample. Following this in-class research, Dr. Bocelli screened the student isolates against eight different species of Xanthomonas bacteria to see which of the student isolates would inhibit the Xanthomonas species and which would not. He then assumed that the student isolates able to inhibit the widest range of Xanthomonas species would have the best ability at inhibiting Xanthomonas orzi, which is currently not found in the United States. Xanthomonas orzi is a pathogenic plant bacterium that blights or kills rice colonies. This bacterium affects millions of acres of land across Asia by significantly decreasing the yield and the quality of the rice grain and is classified as a bioweapon. This is a serious issue considering that more than 3.5 billion people around the world utilize rice as a staple in their daily calories. In order to minimize the damage caused by this invasive species, scientists are searching for soil dwelling bacteria that will be able to stop the spread of Xanthomonas orzi through the use of generating antibiotics as a form of biocontrol. The isolate that I have been using throughout this research was sequenced specifically because of its ability to inhibit different Xanthomonas species found in the United States. The bacterial genome reads presented to me at the start of this project were sequenced by a method called pair and sequencing. This method sequences both ends of a DNA fragment in order to produce high quality alignable data. The sequencing was done to short reads of 301 base pairs long. You can think of sequencing like a puzzle. Segments of the bacterial DNA sample are fragmented at random throughout the genome and after sequenced placed into a large file. The computational task at hand is to then take those fragmented pieces and see which of the pieces align together and overlap to create the overall consensus sequence. The research objectives that align with the goals of this research program include assembling and annotating the genome, identifying the species of bacterium, and detecting the gene clusters that may be responsible for antibiotic production. Here are my hypotheses. I chose to predict that the isolate would belong to either the bacillus or pseudomonas genera due to the fact that it is unlikely that this isolate came from the actinomycete order, even though most bacteria that produce antibiotics do. According to Dr. Bocelli, the isolates grew very quickly when plated and were not grown in a media that was favored to bacteria in this actinomycete order. Additionally, the isolate has already been identified to inhibit a variety of Xanthomonas species. Therefore, it is plausible to predict that it has gene clusters responsible with antibiotic production. Here's a diagram that depicts the steps and tools used to test these hypotheses. Beginning with the assembly and annotation process, I primarily used a program called Patrick. Patrick is a bioinformatics resource center, which is funded by the National Institute of Health. Patrick offers a variety of different services, including a comprehensive genome analysis. On the screen here, you can see an example of the genome annotation interface that is offered on Patrick's webpage. Following the assembly and annotation process, it is important to classify the bacterium. I did so by utilizing a variety of different programs that serve different purposes. Additionally, I have included an alternative strategy of identification in the instance that the following programs produce contradicting results. Lastly, it is important to detect the potential antibiotic pathway production and the gene clusters associated with antibiotic production. I did so by utilizing the two programs, AntiSmash and Patrick. On this screen here, you can see another example of the interface 
offered on the Amy Smash webpage. Following Patrick's Comprehensive Genome Analysis Service, a bacterial genome map is created. On the outside of this map, you can see a ring that shows the context. It is important to note that the context, which represent a set of overlapping DNA segments that represent a consensus sequence in this model, are arranged based off size rather than actual present order in the genome. From this assembly, using the de novo assembler space, which is optimal for small bacterial genomes, 112 contexts were produced. This information allows us to detect to understand that the genome is a draft genome and must undergo additional sequencing methods, such as PCR gap closing or long resequencing, in order to fill the gaps between the context and result in one final context. To begin the classification process, I first used a program called Reads to Type, which is a rapid web based bacterial identification tool that compares context to type strain genome in the program's database. A type strain is a representative strain of a species. This program predicted that our bacteria would belong to the Pseudomonas entomophilia species classification. This program, although does have some limitations considering that not every species has a type strain, so more testing must be conducted. The next method I employed was Patrick's taxonomic classification service. This service accepts contigs or reads and assigns taxonomic labels using 31 base pair sections that are distinct to complete genomes in NCBI's database. This service predicted our bacteria to belong to the Pseudomonas gen genus, which is often isolated in soil. This information supports our first hypothesis that the bacteria belonged to the Pseudomonas genus, as shown in this left-hand column with a fragment coverage of 94.89%. Additionally, Patrick identified Pudida, Mosuli, Entomophilia, and Soli as potential species classifications for the isolate. But the fragment coverage in the clade rooted at the taxon for these values was very low, well, as shown in this highlighted left hand column. The next program I utilized was called Type Strain Genome Server. This program compares our genome one by one to various other type strain references. This information proves that our bacteria is potentially a novel species considering there is not much similarity between the type strains in this database and our isolate. Next, I utilized Patrick's annotation information to extract the 16F rRNA gene and take that nucleotide sequence and blast the sequence to produce the following results. As shown in this highlighted percent identity column, all the values are above 97%, which is the minimum value needed to assign two species as two organisms as the same species. The overwhelming number of pseudomonas matches indicates that our bacterial isolate is potentially also in the pseudomonas genus and further supports our first hypothesis. Finally, I took those extracted 16S rRNA nucleotide sequences and inputted them into a phylogenetic tree surface offered by Genius Prime. Genius identified the closest relative to our isolate with a maximum likelihood score of 0.778 to Pseudomonas mosuli. It is interesting to note that Pseudomonas mosuli was also isolated in the soil, but from the rhizosphere of rice plants and had showed strong inhibitory properties toward fighting rice blast fungus. This information further proves that our isolate is potentially a novel species or a subspecies, which is a common occurrence in microbiology. After classifying the bacterium, it is important to begin investigating the gene cluster that may be responsible for producing a compound that may inhibit Xanthomonas orzi. On the screen here, you can see a list of different gene clusters in the regions within the genome responsible for producing secondary metabolites. A secondary metabolite is a compound that is produced by a microorganism during specific times in its life to promote survival. Antibiotics fall within this category. As you can see in the highlighted regions, on the screen there are five different gene clusters identified within our bacterial isolate that have a predicted function of generating an antibiotic. 
In addition to the anti-SMASH program, which was utilized in the last slide, Patrick was able to identify biosynthetic pathways for secondary metabolites. But as shown in this right-hand column, not all of the genes present to complete the final antibiotic compound are included within the pathway. Here's an example of one of the pathways that is incomplete. The green boxes indicate enzymes that are currently found in the annotated genome. These enzymes are found in other types of pathways and are probably not used for producing puromycin, which is a form of antibiotic. However, the biosynthetic pathway for antimycin has differing results. As shown on the top row, almost all of the enzymes needed to produce this intermediate compound, AHG, are included in the annotated genome. This compound, 3-amino-5-hydroxybenzoic -amino acid, is not currently used in other pathways and is only used for antimycin production. This is evidence to support our second hypothesis that the isolate has gene clusters associated with antibiotic production. In summary, our genome was completely assembled into 112 contexts. The annotated genome is still in progress as it is a draft genome and can undergo various sequencing methods such as long read sequencing or PCR gap closing in order to complete the annotation and completeness of the genome. The bacterium was classified to the genus level Pseudomonas and gene clusters that may code for antibiotic production were successfully detected. My first hypothesis was confirmed as the Pseudomonas genus classification level, while the second hypothesis cannot be confirmed at the moment because we are unsure exactly what the compounds produced by these gene clusters are and if they actually are able to inhibit Xanthomonas orthine. This research is significant due to the rising antibiotic resistant bacteria in our world. Pharmaceutical companies are declining in their efforts to search for new antibiotics. So finding alternative means of finding new forms of antibiotics or other ways to treat these bacteria is greatly needed. Second, utilizing biological control can help minimize the threat of Xanthomonas rice disease. By eliminating Xanthomonas rice disease, this can help it from continuing to spread throughout Asia and can potentially stop Xanthomonas orthi from coming to the United States and affecting our rice crops. Lastly, if this isolate is able to produce a form of antibiotics, and it is a novel form of antibiotics, it will widen our current range of antibiotics used today. I would like to acknowledge my mentors, Dr. Prim and Dr. Pacelli, for their help and encouragement throughout this project. I would also like to thank Dr. Chowdhury and Dr. Cho for their assistance in this program, the United States Department of Agriculture for their generous contributions, and the National Science Foundation for their funding and allowing me the opportunity to conduct research here at St. Houston State University. Here are my references, and thank you. Do you have any questions? Question? Thank you. Okay. Well, we have a uh, before we have coffee.